Hello, welcome to Van Diemen's Land Model Bench. I'm Dan. And to a new series of videos I'm trying out, these are what I'm going to call build blogs. And basically what I'm going to do is just talk about what I've got on the bench and what I've been doing with it and whether I think the kit's any good or any problems I've had and that kind of thing. So this first one is going to be on this, which is the Academy 135th scale German T3476 747. 747 signifying this is a captured Russian T-34 obviously that's seen service with the German army and it's uh, depending what variant you decide to build it's around 43, 1943, 44 something like that and this is going to be the first 135th scale um, kit I have built tank kit I've built since the 1980s I think I built the Tamiya Makava when it was a I hope I'm pronouncing it right. That's the Israeli main battle tank. When that was a new moulding, uh, a new kit. So it's been a while. Speaking of uh, dates too, this one, um, I had a look on scale makes today and this particular mould was first used in 2015 and this version of the T-34 was released this year, 2016. So this is actually basically a brand new tooling. Um, nice box art. You can see on the side here it's got uh, I'll show you there. There we go. Some illustrations of some different variants that you can do. So that one there you can see is the one I'm going to do. Um, one feature on this kit which I was kind of pleased with is it includes a paint index which shows you some of the common colours and the matching colours. I thought that was a really nice feature. It also has a skill level which is up towards four which um, I'm guessing means it's more advanced Although so far, touch wood, it's been pretty straightforward. So, first impressions when I opened the box, and I've already started building it by the way, um, was that I was looking at a Tamiya kit, really. Um, very similar in sort of the quality of uh, the parts, the plastic they've used. Um, yeah, very, very similar. I'm just trying to find something here to show you. So this brew, for example, will give you an idea. It's nice and crisp. Um, there's no flash on the moulds. Uh, the actual plastic feels very similar to the touch to the Tamiya plastics. It's very similar to work with as far as cutting and sanding it. Um, but the mold's very sharp, looks really nice. So first impressions were really, really positive. The other thing that I guess was the first impression was just that there was a lot more parts in it than what you get in a typical Tamiya kit that I was familiar with anyway from the old days. Um, one of the things you got, for example, was three complete sets of wheels. So you get one set of um, steel wheels and two sets of rubber tread wheels which is really nice. Now you obviously don't need all these wheels to make the kit so you've got quite a few of your spears box but I do like the fact that Academy basically let you choose what wheels you want to put on your tank which is really nice. The instruction, oh there was one bit of photo etch as well which I've already built so I'll also show you that's the grill which we'll come back to in a few minutes. Um, decals are very good too, uh, nice and crisp, not a lot of them as you don't typically have a lot on a tank but they look good. The instructions are, are also very sort of Tamiya like I guess um, but again very straightforward. So far through the assembly I've had absolutely no problem understanding what I'm expected to do and um, you know, where the options are available like with the wheel sets very clearly laid out so it's, it's been a real pleasure to build it. In stage one you actually build the suspension for the tank and I was a little bit nervous because you can see here the lower hull, the lower tub is actually made up of three parts and I was a bit concerned about how that was all going to go together, particularly as I haven't built a tank kit in years. But that actually went together very well. And these springs, which I believe are called Christie springs, uh, which sit in the side and the main suspension travel for the wheels. Um, Academy's come up with a really nifty way of doing this. Rather than just sort of moulding them in the side, which wouldn't be terribly accurate, they've actually given them the proper depth by actually creating the springs and these inner pieces separately. And basically you put those two together and whack it in the side there and it all goes together very nicely. There's um, marks on the side here to hold them as well as indentations on the base there as well. Um, throughout this I've been using the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, which I guess most of you guys probably already know about, but if you new to the hobby or just getting back into it, grab yourself a bottle of that before you do this kit. You'll be very glad. For example, with those springs, I was able just to hold them in place um, with my finger and then just run a bit of this round 
the edge of it and the capillary action just basically glued the two parts together. So with this glue it's been a pretty straightforward assembly. I was a bit concerned about this being level too but it turned out to be not a problem at all. Um, the only thing I did do was I bought a head, I was doing step one but I bought this part from step two in which is this like a brace that goes across the hull there, lines up the two parts and as long as you, if that fits in there basically you've got this in the right spot. And when you're done you have a very nice looking uh, suspension set up here. You can see the springs just peeping through the side of the hole there. Looks fantastic. I painted the inside black by the way because um, there is no interior detail in this kit and I wanted to have the vents for the engine compartment open and I also decided I wanted to have the uh, driver's hatch open as well. So if you do peek inside you're not going to see anything because I've just basically put a bit of black primer in there. Um, which I know is not the proper colour for the interior of the hull but since there's no detail I didn't want you to see inside anyway. So that all went well. Um, I've made a start on doing the wheels. So again very impressed with the quality of the wheels and that I guess brings me to my choice of paints for this project. Uh, I've decided to do basically the uh, the one that you saw on the box top a bit earlier, the yellow. So I um, bought uh, some life colour paint. This is the life colours contrast and desaturation set easy three. German Dunkelgelb. Now that's my Aussie pronunciation so if you're a German I apologise. Um, basically this is their sort of approach, life colours approach to letting you do um, modulation which I've been reading a bit about lately and I thought well, I'd have a bit of a crack at it with this kit because I haven't done that before. Um, the paint, life colour paint, just some thoughts on that. I'll show you the three colours first of all. Um, so you get three colours in that set. What have we got? Um, first of all you've got a ground shade. Ground shade is basically, if you like, the main colour. You know, if you were just to paint your tank in the in the official colour, that's the closest to it. It's not quite right, but it's very close. Then you have what's called a flash shade, which is like your highlight colour. And you have a deep shade, which is your shadows. And the idea is, of course, you combine those three to get the very sort of uh, perception of light and shadow on, the, on your tank. Um, I've already sprayed those on the wheels, so here's an example here, there's a steel wheel and there's one with the rubber uh, tread on it and it worked good. I did read online that life colour paints don't work, play particularly well with some thinners, so for example if you use Tamiya paints and you try and use X20A thinner uh, you're just going to gum up your airbrush. It, it, the thing with the Tamiya type paints, I think I've got one flat around here, there we go. So Tamiya paint is, they say they're acrylic but you know, they're flammable so they've got something else in them. Uh, they're very good obviously but they're not really a truly an acrylic. My suspicion is however that the live colour ones are because they smell like acrylic paints. They smell like the artist acrylic paints and even a bit like household, you know, um, floor and ceiling wall paints, that kind of thing. So um, I think they're a bit, bit truer to being acrylic paint. So what I did was I got some of the uh, Life Colour branded thinner, which was quite reasonably priced anyway. Uh, so was their airbrush cleaner actually. Um, check that here somewhere. So I got a bit of that as well. And um, the reason I went with the Life Colour other than the modulation effect was because these bottles are 22 milliliters, whereas the standard Tamiya bottles we get in Australia are 10 and the Mr. Hobby Aquas are also 10 so you're getting basically twice as much paint in these for basically the same price so I thought I'd give them a go and I'm pretty happy with them uh, my overall impressions of them on the positive side is they level really nicely so you don't obscure any of your detail and they would be fantastic if you still do your models with um, a brush because they dry very smoothly. As I said, they level nicely. So if you were painting a tank with a brush, these would be my go-to paint, I think, for doing the camouflage. Um, they thin okay. Uh, there are various opinions about how much you should thin them. I tried everything from 70% paint, 30% thinner, to a 50-50 mix, and both worked for me. 
Uh, one thing I did find though is you've got to lower the air pressure on your airbrush quite substantially. So where I might spray other paints at 22 psi or 17 psi, I think I had these down to about as low as 12 psi. Um, they are very thin paint and you need to apply them in nice thin coats which brings me I guess to the other side of this paint if you want to call it a downside which is that they don't have very good coverage so you need to put two or three thin coats of paint onto your model to get the coverage you want whereas you know sometimes particularly with these darker colors you know in the Tamiya and the Mr Hobby range you can get away with just one coat possibly two but typically even one will be fine but not so with the live colors I had to apply two or three so that kind of negates to some extent the benefit of getting more paint in the bottle because I'm using more of it but I am happy with the finish they give, it looks really nice um, one thing though when you put the thinner in them and you spray them on don't panic because they can look, I, I end up putting the final coat on wet um, and what I found was the thinner evaporates uh, very quickly and very well and you're left with just a nice smooth finish on your parts without any of the detail being obscured. Uh, the only thing to be careful about is if you put too much thinner in they can start to be very runny and possibly even spidery. So what I did to try and help with getting the mixing right was I didn't mix them in the airbrush and I don't like doing that. I'm not confident enough doing that so I just use these disposable medicine cups and I mix them with uh, with the thinner in there until they look about right pour a little bit in the airbrush and if it's a problem uh, well I've only got a little bit in the airbrush so I can remix it in the cup and then pour a little bit more and just experiment till I get it right but they weren't that bad I'm probably uh, talking about it more than it was a problem to use it but just to be aware that they are a little bit fussier than say the Tamiya brand paints but so far so good so I'm happy enough with them that I'll keep doing the rest of the tank with them um, the other thing I've been working on is the tracks. The tracks are kind of interesting in this kit. Uh, if I find the instructions just for a moment. So you don't get the rubber band tracks like you do with the Tamiya kits. Uh, you get these plastic tracks and they're an, I think they're a nice compromise. I know some of the Dragon kits and some of the other more sort of advanced kits have individual links for the entire track, which I wasn't really keen on. Uh, these ones are a nice compromise I think, so you can see the straight sections are all one piece and then you've got the separate links just to go around the uh, drive and idler wheels. I think that's not a bad little compromise there, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, to my eyes at least the track detail looks pretty reasonable. I've actually started painting these. You can see there's one length there. Uh, there is some ejection pin marks on these tracks but I didn't bother cleaning that off. Um, guess you could wouldn't make it a lot harder work but I figured by the time these are put on the tank and the weathering's done you're not likely to notice them anyway but overall I thought they looked pretty good um, for painting them I initially just put some primer on them and the primer I used was uh, Mig's polymer surface primer this is their black primer sort of dries so a bit of a satin finish this is Mig 2005 um, the MIG primer has sort of become my default primer now for most jobs. I do have some lacquer thinners, that are, uh, lacquer, thinners lacquer primers that I do use um, mainly just to try them out but they've also got micro filler feature to them so if I need them I'll use those but for normal jobs I just use this stuff it works fine for me. Uh, I know some people have had trouble online with these particular primers but to me the secret to using them is just to shake them thoroughly and mist a coat on initially. Don't try and put them on in one coat. Just mist it on so you break the surface tension and then apply one or two layers and you'll be good to go. Which by the way would be my recommendation for working with the live color paint as well. Um, unfortunately it was too dark so I ended up settling on using some Mr. Hobby uh, H77 tire black which is a very dark grey I don't know how well that is showing up on the on the video but it's pretty much exactly the colour I wanted and then I also just sprayed a very thin coat of MIG 
035 dark tracks over the top of that so I thin that right down probably about 60% thinners maybe even 70% thinners to 30-40% paint so there is just a tinge of a brown colour to it don't know if that shows up on the camera but looking at it here you can see it and obviously there's a bit more work to go on those but that's a starting point with those so um, here's the upper hull so far everything's gone together fine the fit is extremely good all the parts were easy to, uh, to fit I had no trouble at all uh, the level of detail is very nice you can see we've got separate louvers here for the radiators and that's where our photo etch part comes in so here's our photo etch cover goes over the top there you can see the louvers through it which is nice one feature academy has added to the kit is if you're not confident with photo etch which i wasn't terribly confident but i think i got away with it um, but if you don't like photo etch or you're not confident with it they also include an alternative part here just with the grill uh, molded into the part which looks quite good as well so you won't get the 3d effect obviously but otherwise looks really nice so that's where we're up to with the build and in the next video hopefully we'll finish off the upper hull and make a start on the turret so we'll catch you then